the title of the presentation is Do You Hear What I Hear? So I will talk um, a little bit about listening skills. But part of what you hear is what you say. So we are going to... <laughs> scripture from James that talks about being quick to listen and slow to speak. Ephesians talk, talks about speaking the truth in love. Deuteronomy tells us um, to listen to his voice. And then Job, the, um, but if they do not listen, the people will perish by the sword, sword and die without knowledge. The Proverbs, a, a, faith, a false witness will perish, but a careful listener will testify successfully. Isaiah, you have seen many things, but you pay no attention. Your ears are open, but you do not listen. Well, the first thing is creating a supportive climate. Equality versus superiority. What are we saying there? Um, it's possible that you may not always be right, and the other person may have a view. So establishing equality even in your conversation, in your discussion. Uh, descriptive versus evaluative. Problem orientation versus control. Not dominating the situation or the conversation, but actually um, giving the opportunity for information to flow through and to seek um, resolution to the problem. Spontaneity versus strategy. Um, from a leadership perspective, sometimes you think, okay, I'll have a conversation with this person and I know where we need to be, so I'm going to ask certain questions so that we get to a certain end result. And in a leadership framework. Sometimes you'll hear people say that that's the appropriate thing to do, right? Because you're going to drive the conversation where you need to be. And as an achiever director, you know, that's right, right? Actually, it's not. And empathy versus neutrality. Uh, Jake Gibbs describes neutrality as being very cold. But empathy, you're really taking it into account. Um, so as an example, if someone is late and, um, you know, rather than saying, you know, you were late. You know, we can never depend on you. But that person might, you know, they might have had a wreck. Child might have been sick. So just think about that when you're interacting with others. Again, seeking information to understand what the situation has unfolded or what the other person's view is, rather than assuming and making a position even without having the dialogue. There are all kind of profiles. I'm sure all of you are aware of them or probably have even had Myers-Briggs or any of those others. But I like the friendly style profile because very simple, very high level, four categories. Achiever, accommodator, analyzer, affiliator. Can you be more or one or more than one of these? Yes. Establish and maintain trust. So then what do you do? You have all of these communication techniques, so you adjust your communication. Listen different, move different, body language, speak different, particularly when responding to criticism and taking ownership. That's a hard one when someone is uh, criticizing you, whether it's positive um, or not constructive or not. But you can control yourself and you can speak differently to that person when um, they're giving you criticism. So effective listening, how do we do that? Listen between the lines. There's always content, but there's also um, emotion behind uh, communication and <coughs> And then this thing for potential. When someone comes to you and they're talking about something, and it may be really negative, right? And you may find yourself really fighting to, to not get drawn into that triangle, to that not, um, negative conversation that everyone has talked about earlier. But listen for the potential. How could something positive come out of that? So directive, 
you're specifically seeking information that the person didn't provide. Um, you can ask them to elaborate, provide clarification. Um, you might even repeat what they're saying just to make sure, but you know, add another sentence or another word to, to elicit more conversation from them. Difficult Conversations is actually a book written by three authors who were part of the Harvard Negotiations Project. And they describe the process first as walking through three conversations. And you might think, okay, what does that mean? This sounds complex, Marsha. You know, give me something simple. It's really not difficult, right? The first conversation, what happened? We've already talked about that. Fact finding, right? What you know to be the facts may not be that the facts that the other person aware is aware of. So once you have that communication, <coughs> then you understand it. Even if you don't have that communication, be open to the concept that you don't know everything. <laughs> so the last thing that I want to cover is the power and presence of the Holy Spirit. But I think sometimes we get so caught up in the tradition and get so caught up in the methodology of things. Just simply asking for the power and presence of the Holy Spirit is what really goes open the eyes of my heart. But we've reworded it. <laughs> um, consistent with the message today, open the ears of my heart, Lord, so we can hear you. 